So to give a little bit of prerequisite of what uh, the lesson is about, we find that King Ahab looks out his window and he sees a vineyard that he likes. A vineyard that he wants. A vineyard that is close to his palace. Something that he can walk out to the palace and be right there. It's convenient. And just like real estate is, it's all about location. Yep. And boy, it would be nice for him to have that vineyard and be so close to home. So Ahab wanted it. And he told Naboth, he said, he would give him a better vineyard than it than he had or give him money for what it's worth. But you know, you start looking, I know it's all about sort of location, but there were, if there was a better vineyard, the king would want the better vineyard. There was no better vineyard. He wanted that vineyard because that vineyard was probably the better one. And you, you look at it, you know, as, as, as the vineyard, and we start looking at ourselves in a spiritual sense, you know, the vineyard is so close to the king's palace. And if you look at the king's palace as the world and the vineyard as our, as our salvation, you know, the world wants our salvation. The world wants us, it wants to attack or it wants what we have, but it don't want how we live or it don't want to give up the world for what yeah. that vineyard holds, which is our salvation. So King Ahab, he wanted it. And he asked Naboth that, and Naboth refused to sell it. Mm -hmm. He said his property to Ahab on the basis of the inheritance regulations of the law of Moses. So he more or less told him, he said, I could, if I wanted to, I couldn't, because in, with the law of Moses, there were certain things of your inheritance you couldn't trade to another tribe. You had to keep it within your tr tribe. Mm -hmm. So uh, that angered, not, not so much angered Ahab, but he went home and uh, he pouted. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he was distraught and he was just, he wouldn't eat. And, and the queen uh, Jezebel came and said, how come you're not eating? Yeah. He said, well, nay, Naboth it has his vineyard and he wouldn't sell it to me. I offered him better vineyard, more money, but he wouldn't sell it. And she sort of got on to him and said, well, you're the king. You can do whatever you want. She said, I'll, more or less, she told him, I'll take care of it. She said, you'll get your vineyard. And he went on. So, Jezebel, she wrote letters to the elders of the, the town and uh, put the king's seal on them. And uh, she had it to hold fast for Naboth and uh, she wanted more or less a festive party for old Naboth. They said, hold a feast for him, praise him. And then uh, as you're at this feast, have somebody to call out accusations to him, uh, make certain things to maybe question his integrity or his status. And then as that went on, the, what, what they actually did was accuse him of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. So they said that the, they had, uh, they had set men, sons of Bilal. And these were men that, were, this is no good. If you look it up and, and, and in the dictionary and stuff, it was the, these were people that uh, carry, uh, they were worthless men. They were scoundrels. They committed various acts of wickedness such as drunkenness, hostility, abuse of power, adultery, rebellious, rebelliousness. So these were your no good people. 
They were the, the these were the deeds that was done, uh, you know, by the, the by the mean people. So what she, what she wanted them to do is have this party. You and they here it is. You got to think of Nabal. Here I am. I'm going to a party where they're going to honor me. They're going to lift me up. And at the same time that I'm getting lifted up, they're going to tear you down. They're going to accuse you of blasphemy. And then it turns around. They go up and they stone him. Kill him. So here he thought what was a good day for him turned out to be his last day. How does, it, how does that compare to the world today? Well, the, Lord, the, the world will lift you up one day and they'll cut you down. If you go against what the world says, will cut you down in a heartbeat. If you don't combine what the world wants, if you don't do what the king says or, or how the world wants you to act, if you don't do how the, or say how the world wants you to say, they're going to cut you down. And we find ourselves in that. And, I, in, and as a Christians, we're going to probably find ourselves in worse situations than that. We're going to be afraid to even uh, say, I'm a Christian, I'm, or lift up God's name. They don't want to hear Jesus. They'll hear, the, the world will say, they'll, they'll, hear, they'll acknowledge any uh, religion, but boy, don't say Jesus because then that goes against this or that and all these other things that makes them feel bad and they don't want to hear that. And that's, it's going to get worse. So they, they, they took uh, Nabal out and they, and they stoned him. And uh, even uh, if you read in 2 Kings 9.26, even God said that uh, they even killed his sons because they were probably next in line to get that, to get that vineyard. Mm -hmm. so, so as things went, they destroyed his whole family and his inheritance right there just because the king wanted it. So this is where we come to, to come, this is where our lesson starts. So in 1 Kings 21, 17, and it says, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Nabal, whether he has gone down to possess it. So this is the next day. So Nabal has got his robe on, got his shoes. He's, I'm going to go see my vineyard. He's, he says, my baby got me this vineyard. Well, God told Elijah to go down there. So Elijah must have been somewhat close to where because he, he got there at the same time. So Elijah in verse 19 it says, And thou shalt speak unto it says okay, and thou shalt speak unto him, saying, This is God talking to, to Elijah. He said, Thus saith the Lord. When it says, Thus saith the Lord, it's coming from God. It's serious. Yeah. Said, you tell him that I said, Hast thou killed? And also taken possession. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord. In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. So Elijah goes down there and said, he's on his journey. And that's what God told him to tell the king once he gets in his vineyard. So and Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? Ahab and Elijah has had a past. Elijah, from the very beginning, has told him how, how and why and how God wanted him to rule. And Ahab looked away, done his own thing. So he counted Ahab 
I mean, he counted Elijah as like that thorn in my side. Like, you have people that come up and, as a king, you know, he wants to do his way, how he wants to do it. He, he didn't want to, for his own benefit. But, but here's this guy, this, here comes the holy man telling me how to do it. And, you, and it puts it where he don't profit or he, it ain't his way. He don't want to do it God's way. So he said, oh, oh, my enemy. And he answered, I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Ain't it funny? God shows up when things aren't what it's supposed to be. God told Elijah, go to him. But as if you would read all Ahab and his past and how it is, we think, well, Lord, how could, how could God do that? It's the same grace, it's the same mercy that God has put on us. How many times do you think about yourself? How many times have you done this constant time and time and time again? You didn't want to do God's way. You want to do it your way. But you don't acknowledge it as your way because you think you're right. And when you look back on it, you say, God wanted me to do it this way all along. Yeah. Because you do, you, cause you're consumed with yourself doing it your way. When we don't acknowledge and ask God for guidance and direction, he's sending uh, Elijah time and time again to Ahab, this is the way I want you to do it. This is the way I'll, and how and why. But Ahab wanted to do it his way. And, that, and it's not God's way. Now he's reverted. Ahab wanted this guard, uh, the vineyard, and his wife diabolically had set it up for him to get it. Ahab didn't have nothing in this. He didn't do, he didn't lift the finger, he didn't write the letter, he didn't stamp it, he didn't do nothing, but he let it happen. Sometimes in our life, we might see things going on or we might know it's bad. Did we stand up and say, no, that's not how God would want it? No. Or do we just sit back and let it happen? I don't want any of that. It's not my business. If God pricked your heart to be, to be that Elijah, to say, no, that's not right, then you're not being right. Sometimes he wants to, God wants to use us just like he did Elijah. Elijah, oh, they said, well, he's a prophet. He, we're all set aside for God's work. We're all that. He wants to use us. We're a vessel. When he says do something, do it. Elijah could have said, well, I don't want to, I don't feel like going over to Jesus. Me and him don't get along. Every time I say something, he don't want to do it, so why do it? Don't it sound like us? Like, oh, well, they, they just roll their eyes at me. But there was a message that God wanted to get set across to him. You've done evil. He says, behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity. And I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel. I bet that got Ahab's attention because all this time God is just letting him go, trying to give him grace and mercy just like he does us. Now God's casting judgment on him. And it says, the posterity literally means what follows you. Ahab's descendants. When it says, pisseth against the wall, which is, you know, women can't do that. It means all of his male. It means he was going to kill him and all of his male, all of his descendants. So that, that got Ahab's attention real quick and it says and will make thine house like the house of 
Jeroboam, the son of Nebai, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And if you look up, if you read about those two families, those uh, dynasties were wiped out. He said, your family, your dynasty will be wiped out just like these other two will. Ahab knew that those two had been wiped out. So Ahab now sees himself, not him, but his whole family, his whole dynasty will be wiped out because of what he let happen. And of Jezebel. So now he gets, he said, now don't you think, because he was telling, he was at, in these uh, verses, he was talking about him and these and his sons. So now God has turned his attention to Jezebel. He said, And Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city of the in the city the dogs shall eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto you, Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. So he, Ahab listened to his wife, let it happen, and now he finds himself judged, and he's, he's, God just judged him. What if God judged us today? Or where we stand right now, just, just right now, where you sit, God, God says, I'll judge you now. Where would you stand? Because that's where Ahab lives. Mm -hmm. Ahab could, probably could have argued, well, it wasn't me, it was her. Don't matter. He let it happen. God knew everything, God knew his heart. He knows your heart. I don't care if you proclaim a Christian or not. He still knows your heart. Yeah. But like Ahab, all this time, he already gave. He gave time, mercy, and grace. But now he's getting judged. And you can say, well, I thought, you know, God... <laughs> You know, casts your sin from the east from the west. Well, this is the Old Testament. This is before Jesus. Jesus is that ultimate sacrifice. Jesus said, "You know, you you forget, ask him to forgive your sins." There was no, there was no sacrifice Ahab gave for his sin offering. We look at it a little different. Yeah, you know, we we can ask God to forgive us. And he's just to forgive us and cast as far as from the east and the west. But we find ourselves just like Ahab. There, there's a payday someday. We don't do wrong and get by. Mm. Jesus, Jesus uh, put in uh, in Matthew. Jesus, this is in Matthew seven twenty one. Jesus said, "With what measure of meat it shall be measured to you again? Whatever you do will come back on you." So, you do good, good will come by. You do wrong to people, wrong is going to come by. It's, it's a price. And this is sin. There's always a price for sin. Sin is always... But Jesus is just to forgive all our sin. And it says that he did very abominably in following idols according to all things as did the Amorites whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass when Ahab heard these words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Seest thou how, how Ahab humbled himself before me. Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring 
the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. God had mercy on him. God saw that he was a sorrowful man. he done all the steps. This is the first time that Ahab had ever done that. Just like God will have mercy on us. No matter what sin you have, you humble yourself before him. He is just to forgive us. Now, you say, well, he was going to, and he said, and he was going to bring evil to him still yet. There's a payday. That sin was going to, he was, he was judged. But he was given him time. In time, what could have, he have done in, that, in, in this time that has been accountable? Mm -hmm. He could have changed God's mind and said, you have really changed. You have done so much good that I forgive you, that I will not cast all of this on you. But as you read on, we see that Ahab turned to his old ways. It's easy to, well, I know this lesson ain't great, but when God judges them, or well, what we think is judged when hard times come in our life, it's easy to come in here and ask for forgiveness and, and say, praise God and uh, forgive me when calamity is coming up against me, when you have authorities on your tail or when you're, somebody's in the hospital and, or you're sorry or stuff is happening at home or you don't have a job, but it's easy to come in here and say, Lord, help me. Have mercy on me. And then when things get better, like he looked at him and said, I'll give you more time. And then I, you take that time and you think, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm in the clear. God showed me. And then you go back to your old ways because you're not in trouble no more. Because you didn't get it. You didn't, you weren't looking for God. You was looking for an escape code. You was looking for peace of mind for only a short time instead of getting God by his hand and say, I want you from now. I want you to be Lord and Savior of me and my house, and I want to take it and I'm not letting go of you. Because we had the wrong intentions to start off with. It's having if you want him, he's there. Mm -hmm. But if you're just using him just to make yourself feel good for just a short time, he knows He knows your heart. He knows if you want him or not. Right. He said, I'll change it from the inside. I'll make you a new creature. Right. And if you don't feel like you're a new creature, then, then maybe you're not. <coughs> it's a good morning to be that new creature. That's right. If he's pricking your heart and saying, Maybe I feel a little, a little short. Maybe I don't have that joy that I want to. Maybe, maybe is the, this morning is a good time to get that joy and that peace of mind. Because mm -hmm. you have, you have Ahab here, and he, he wasn't right. He just, he ignored God's wisdom. If, if. If you read the story, God would tell him he would have the prophets, he'd have 400 prophets come and tell he would listen to them because it was what they agreed with him. And then the next king would say, these are not surely a man of God. He said, these are saying the same thing. And the one man would say, don't do it. He, would, he wouldn't listen to him. So that's uh, today is a good opportunity for you to right. get your heart right with God. Whether you be Christian or a sinner, today is the day of salvation. And he's a good and just God. But if you want him, you grab on to him. And you hold on. Because he's the best thing going today. That's right, brother. Thank you.